right, coming into the ring now, we have another Chrissy Shiny with another chance for horses. Talking about without you, there can be no rescue. You saw Gracie a couple minutes ago. Well, here's the opposite with John Spicy and Celine. Another chance for horses is a rehabilitation and placement uh, in Burnville, Pennsylvania. They've been in continuous operation for over a decade. Another Chance for Horses is a volunteer-based all-breed horse rescue that assists horses through surrenders, neglect cases, local auctions, outbidding out out kill buyers, buying sick or injured horses, and purchasing directly out of the kill pens. Hey, John. Sometimes literally moments before they are shipped to slaughter. It's a little difficult, it's a bit of a difficult subject, but without you, there is no rescue. Please welcome Christy Shiny, Celine, and John Spicy. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the fourth annual Pet Expo. We're happy to have you here today. We have, if we could just give a big round of applause to Julie, who has done a lot of work coordinating this event. We really appreciate her efforts. Um, as Julie said, we are another chance for horses. We have been in continuous operation for over a decade. It's almost 20 years now. We started by accident. We found a pen in need and a pot belly pig and a goat. And they were not able to be used anymore for the purpose that the owner intended, which was a petting zoo. So what happens when an animal is no longer needed or wanted by the current owner is they become in a dangerous situation. What happens to the animals in this instance is they were be sent to an auction. So the auctions you have illness, death by injury, you also have kill buyers. Kill buyers purchase horses for slaughter for human consumption. I know we don't need horses here in the United States, but they do in other countries. Japan, Europe, Spain particularly likes our dolphins. Donkeys are a lot bigger than John, but they have bigger beast. So what we do is try to rescue as many of the animals as we can because they can be used for other purposes. Slaughter is the worst thing that's happened for our economy. A slaughter horse goes to an auction or into a token one time. It's vetted one time, it's shipped one time, and it's killed. It's the end of the financial process for that animal. For an animal that is not slaughter bound, if we didn't have slaughter, the animal would go through an auction and it would be purchased. Say he would drive little kids to school for a while, as it was mentioned in his book, which is available online, the Slaughter Horse Pen for the Market. Um, from there, He's outgrown. So another person gets him for their child. And then the cycle continues. Each time they are sold, there's a sales tax, which by the way, we aren't taxed on slaughter animals. Horses are taxed. And they're also slaughtered. It's a fine line there. Uh, little horses like this can run anywhere from $150 being very wild and running through the lake to thousands of dollars for the, the, the registered show courses. And they have many purposes. They do halter showing, they do jumping courses to set the agility for the dogs. They also drive. So John can be hitched to a little cart and harness and drive a full grown adult in showing, which is pretty cool. Um, back to the slaughter issue in economics. Right now in America, the financial situation obviously is tough. People are going to give up what's not important to them or what they feel is not important to them and they'll still pay for things that are. If you have an animal in need, talk to your local agencies for placement. Many of the rescue agencies, large animal protection societies, SPCAs, all have placement assistance programs so that your animal doesn't need to be put in danger. And it's not the intention of most owners, and unfortunately when we speak to them afterwards, they had no idea, never wanted their animal to be put in danger, and if they had it to do over again, would. This is preventative work. 
tell everybody what happens. It's not blue. It's not. It, it's not the old. It's not the infirmed. We can't eat sick meat. It's not anything but a big fat horse, maybe it's beef, making money for a toe buyer in the slaughter plant. It does not take care of the need for the old who wants to be, uh, who is needing to be euthanized in a human man. It's very important that you realize that. Currently, there are no slaughterhouses open in the United States. They were shut down by state regulations last year. Since that's happened, the number of animals that have gone through auction actually has decreased and the price per horse has increased. For an example, Montana is right now trying to put through an amendment, HB 418. I just emailed the governor yesterday, called him on the phone. Montana's own paper from Billings Livestock Auction, since November of 2007, no slaughterhouses in the United States, per horse, on average, the price has gone up $119 per head. That's a pretty big increase since no, it November of 7 with no slaughterhouses in the United States. There is responsible alternatives to horse slaughter. There is euthanasia, and you'll know, hear the argument that, well, you know, there's chemicals in euthanasia. There are euthanasia in many ways that can be utilized in another aspect, so that if you still want to have a usable byproduct with your blood animal, you can. Um, the horses that are sent to slaughter travel great distance, even in the United States. The auctions are miles away. They stand there with other horses they don't know. If you have, have any experience with horses, when we first meet, it's, it's a, you have to establish who's going to be dominant. Same thing with dogs, cats. Kids, anything else, we have a clip. That is not a good experience or a good way for them to be 50, 60 horses in a pen and then ship in that manner. Most of the times, very long distances without food and water. There is a need for a solution like discounted humane euthanasia in the area. We are working to establish that with the Pennsylvania Met Veterinary Medical Association and the surrounding veterinary clinics. You can visit our website, which is www.acclinics.com. Our group is over there, alongside of LAPS, which is the Wild Animal Protection Society, and Last Chance Ranch, which is right across the Both of them are community agents to cover different areas. If you have or see an animal that is neglected, in your opinion neglected, Take a look on our website. We have the Heineke scale there. It will tell you what an animal's condition or body scoring should look like. There's also pamphlets available in Red Wax food that have the Heineke chart. If you see an animal that is not in good condition, is not being taken care of, you have a responsibility as an individual to report it. Okay? The reason crimes happen is because people don't report it. You need to stand up and let people know that it's happening. If you don't get the assistance you need, call the rescue organization. They will assist you in finding the local SPCA or animal protection agency in your area. That goes for small animals, too. Are there any questions from anybody in the crowd? Any questions? OK. Anybody know how long a horse lives? Any guess? Horses, on average, can live up to 45 years of age. Selena has a pony at home that raised her and most of Lily with kids in the area. She is 40 years old and still doing very well. Horses can live if they're taken care of into the forties. But the average lifespan is in, you know, about 30 because with proper care, the horses have a longer lifespan. The care of a horse that is required